This is the Skunk Fam Podcast. If you have been following along with us on this series, you'll know that Joe Pietri has given us some really incredible information. Um, he's also given us some amazing cultivation techniques. Um, one thing I do want to say before we get started is I've had a few people messaging me saying, uh, why are you being so negative? You know, why are you saying these things about people? And I just want to say one thing. <clears throat> a couple months ago, I, re I, I watched my cousin die from colorectal cancer because she had no access to the medication she needed. I truly believe that the people we're talking about are directly related to the fact that people have no access to the medication they need. So this is a deeply personal subject for me. I know it's a deeply personal subject for these guys too. So before you come to my inbox asking me why I'm being negative, just know it's because when you watch someone die because they don't have access to a medication, that's why you come to the place we're at now. We're trying to get this information about, out about these people because we believe everyone should have access to cannabis. It is the most important drug and medication of all time. So, uh, you know, I'm probably and not only that we want people to have access to the real cannabis, the old school cannabis, exactly. not the absolute yeah. bullshit it's it's been been profile. Pumped to people today. Cookies, you know, whilst I'm not going to dispute high THC uh, oils will uh, cure cannabis to a uh, cancer to a degree. It will kill tumors, but it is not as effective as full spectrum, uh, complete ratio a range of cannabinoids and terpenes that were deliberately uh, removed from cannabis by people that are fated as heroes today, when in fact there's scum working for the police and working for Big Pharma who deliberately destroyed the truly effective cannabis medicine. So we're not being negative, we are being positive in bringing the truth to people. And we live in an age where the truth is not popular. Exactly. And there is exactly. nothing that makes people exactly. more upset than an inconvenient truth. And so not the truth. It, Fuck it's off. like I said, when the science caught up to it, now they have CBD, they've separated all the cannabinoids and all the flavonoids. And now they're making medicines from that while we're stuck with a, a, a weed that makes you stupid. Yeah. That, make, that keeps you on the on your couch lot is unproductive. It's not good for working. It's not the energizing a bunny that we used to have in the sixties and seventies. The the old school weed, you know. And that's the basically fact is the young people of today have been lied to. They've been promote, given something that's promoted as elite. That in many times you hear about these elite cuttings, and we hear about you know all this rapper weed it is shit people yeah. don't understand that your grandfather was smoking better than you he had better yeah, medicine exactly. he had better exactly. recreational cannabis exactly and the negativity with why are you so negative negative dude you've been lied to for 30 years Dutch yeah. marketing fraud uh, uh 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 fraud lies and deceptions Dutch marketing for our control of the cannabis media and cannabis information, where they didn't even teach photoperiodism in, in, in uh, the grow books, the most important aspect of being able to grow year round. They left that out on purpose and it came up with a thing called cannabis botany. There is no cannabis botany, there's just botany. And so they, all these kids that are college, college out, educated took biology 101 and in biology 101 they teach you photoperiodism all they'd have to do is go back to their old college books and all the information to grow is right there in nelson's greenhouse operation and management and this is what i want to talk about is the fraud in the industry today is so immense i mean uh, uh, i wrote an article uh, 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 bubble bags, the biggest cannabis fraud, the biggest fraud in cannabis history, because the bubble bags, uh, they dilute your medicine. They take all your, all the high times would say, oh, forget all those little turpins, forget all the, that stuff and just go after the big heads, the big heads, the big heads. Well, those little turpins are the flavonoids and cannabinoids that make the medicine full spectrum, which makes the medicine work. You know, and so uh, 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 they've been taking out the medicine and just leaving you the THC, which gets you stupefied. And uh, uh, they come up with products like butane hash oil. Well, you know, Rick Simpson, he first started making 
uh, uh, or RSO using naphtha, one of the most horrendous things that ever happened because you really don't need it. You, to make Rick Simpson oil, all you need is glycerin. You know, glycerin and just cooking it down yourself and straining it off yourself and making your own tinctures at home, which I, I you know, I've been, you know, teaching that for years. But this seed, as an example, you, uh, 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 you have a uh, uh, Dutch marketing fraud, the Frenchy cannoli. Frenchy cannoli is a fake. Everything about him was made up. He uh, had the nerve to apply for a patent that was, uh, that, that the ice water method patent, which had run out, now he uh, he pat repatented it under a different his name and some other way. Where he now wants a, you know, he, <laughs> where I, people have to get a license from him. Let me tell you something. He built a seven, a five thousand, six thousand dollar refrigeration machine, and that swirled the weed around and separated the the the. Uh, uh, the oil. The patent is is such. It says, uh, in the ice water environment, simple agitation will release the oils and the cannabinoids. It's the whole object of it is to be able to remove the trichomes as undamaged as possible, not by putting a paint mixer in there and <laughs> and to mix up to make your mix. The 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 actual separation is is you could do it with a spoon actually, but we, we put uh, uh, mixers on there on the lowest possible setting, you know, which I'm doing a whole video on Wednesday, which I'm going to show. And uh, 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 everything that they've done, so they, 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 they tell you, oh, uh, wait until the trichomes are 50% amber. Well, when they tell you that, your medicine has been, deleted, uh, been depleted 50%. It's no longer THC, it's CBN. So they're not get, they're not giving you the information that you need to make medicine because when you the only time you want to even pick your cannabis uh, 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 is when the trichomes are all cloudy. The minute that you see amber, you need to cut that plant down because it started to degrade. Yeah, and that's a fact. Crazy, you know, Joe. And, We've and, had and, and for like people to say, oh, it. why are you so negative, dude? This is the most this is the, the most corrupt business since it was taken over by the Dutch. The worst thing that ever happened was the Dutch scene. They've, yeah. they've mixed everything up with skunk number one because they own that genome and they put that, that skunk number one is, is basically a, a, a genetic marker so that they can further down the road say, oh, that weed is our weed. You got that, you got that THCV or you got that CBD from our weed. We had one guy here who actually wanted to patent everything over 2% THC, uh, uh, metacinal genomes. That guy is the biggest creep. He, he went to, to uh, uh, the Emerald Cup and stole everybody's samples of everybody's uh, entries. Just out stole them. I mean- and Who was that, Joe? Uh, uh, I forget his name, but it's Metacinal Genomes. Now they're partnered up with, with Philo's Bioscience. And I guess oh, right. Philo's Bioscience sold their company to another company and they're out of it or they're partners in it, but they've got a big uh, uh, input. Now they're selling seeds. They're sell and it's funny because, because uh, uh, they're selling feminized hemp seeds and feminized cannabis seeds and saying that they finish in a certain amount of time and everything. But they really don't go into the, the 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 plants. Never ever see a male. Yeah. If, if it doesn't see a male, then how does it get the? How does it? How does it go into overdrive to produce resin, in the hopes and anticipation that it's going to get po pollinated? And never going to get pollinated. It doesn't even know what a male is. It's never seen a male. So when they use the pollen off a male, a female plant, what they do is they use different chemicals to freak the plant out where it produces a banana on that plant. And then they use that plant, once it does that, to pollinate clones that they took from the mother and from the plant in the very beginning. The first thing they did is put, to make clones. Once the clones are growing, 
they freak the plant out. They make it pollinate from a from a female plant. So they call it it's a female uh, femini feminization, and then they feminize the uh, 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 the clones with female pollen, right? So those pollen those plants never see a male. So that's why you have her why you have hermite her hermaphrodites because the plant is not used to being taken to that level. So it's, it's, it knows it's missing something. So it, it produces its own male. So then you see a plant that's both male and female. You know, and even when you're, when you're, when you're cutting your plants, when you're, when you're making clones and they come up, you'll see that some have male and some have female. Well, that's not normal. Even though in the field, you see that because everything is being self-pollinated itself. But even then, it's very distinct, the males and the females. What happens is that the female, the males grow up, they seed everything up. And then, the, so you have like a, 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 a Rhode Island area of basically seeds <laughs> because it's just pollinating uh, 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 itself. That's what makes it, you know, if you throw 10 seeds in the field and you come back in five years, you'll have a field full of weed. You don't have to do anything to it. It just regenerates itself. So anyway, the, the Dutch fraud here, they, they created this guy. First thing, I, oh, I went to the last time I went to the Emerald Cup, I had that guy, Frenchy Cannoli, come over and, and just take a look at me just to see who I was. And I noticed him out of the side of my eye. I went over to, uh, 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 there was a... Uh, a pavilion there of all Dutch equipment and Dutch fields. And the lady there worked for Mila. And when I, so when I went in there and looked at all the stuff with Reinhard Delp, uh, 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 son, uh, you know, uh, uh, I said, you know, I said, look, this is Mila. This is the biggest fraud. And it started really coming down on Mila. And that was her boss. So she got all uptight that I, I told I told him that Mila is a piece of shit. Mila is a piece of shit. She actually paid a publisher not to print my second edition. That's how afraid the Dutch are of me. There's no one that hurts the Dutch more than Joe Pietri. There's no one that no one that gives you, you the correct information directly from science and 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 books, ag horticultural books that are you you should have read in college. You know, uh, uh, it's incredible. It's incredible. That's why the I, the information on my growing tips is really important. Well, you know, Frenchy Cannoli is just all made up Hollywood. And that, that, that's a, a lot of, of what you see uh, in, in, uh, in, the, in the cannabis world is everybody, oh, you have one guy top dog, you got another guy, guy saying the, 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 the origins of sour diesel and OG. Those guys weren't even, on, weren't even getting high when that stuff happened. That stuff happened in the uh, in the seventies, when all those when all those uh, land races were available readily in the U.S. and always had been, and the hash we we were getting from Afghanistan and Lebanon, and, you know, Frenchy Cannoli he never was in Afghanistan where they went uh, in the golden years of hash making, you know. He's never been to Lebanon and show and, and, and seen how the Lebanese do it. The Lebanese hash making technique, the sieving technique, uh, uh, was directly copied by the by the uh, people who sell bags, bubble bags, triple X bags, Mila's bags, all those bags. Was a, 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 the method was directly copied from the from the uh, uh, Lebanese method, except that in the in the New method, they added ice to separate the trichomes, and man, they went they, they went from from two bags. Then Bubble Man came out with three. Then he came out with five. Then he came out with nine. George Cervantes wanted to do fifteen bags. My point about Frenchy Cannoli is he's all made up. He's all the all the information, all the videos, all that stuff was made available to him. The information was available. He's just the the poster boy. All these people are actors, they're puppets. They're actors, they're actors. They're not the real deal. They're not the real deal smugglers who brought this shit over. He's never been to Land Dakota. You know, uh, there's, a, there's a famous picture of Neville uh, uh, standing in a warehouse in Land Dakota 
and uh, and Bara Dara on the border of Afghanistan and Pakistan, no man's land. But it's called Pashtunistan, and the Pashtu tribe. You know the 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 uh, he took a he took a picture of a go down uh, of himself holding some resin in his hands, and then he goes into this story how he paid someone to walk into the into Mazari Sharif and bring him back seeds back to him in Pakistan during the Af Afghan Rus uh, Russo War. Nobody, everybody was trying to get out of Afghanistan. Nobody was, <laughs> nobody was <laughs> wanting to, to, to go up to bulk to collect seeds. What the Pakistanis did, they just sold them really good seeds, but from Pakistani plants, which they basically say it's the same thing, you know what I mean? In some ways, yeah. but it wasn't because in Afghanistan, you had farmers and you had a pride and that everybody was called uh, the, the smoking scene in, in Afghanistan were called Charsi Babas. They were Charsi. That means they were followers of Ashish. And they would say, they would say they had a, an expression, uh, 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 Charsi ne Marsi, ekdo tin leko Marsi, which means uh, 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 a Charsi will live forever. When he dies, he'll take 10,000 people with him. There were soldiers. That was like a soldier thing, you know what I mean? So everybody had really pride in Afghanistan. Yeah, uh, the women, you never saw them in a coffee shop or in a shop. They had tea shops where they had big hubbly bubblies and everybody would come in there and put their best up there. And and I've seen foreigners that went there and took a hit off of some of those hookahs and they fell out. Joe, can I ask you, did you ever try hash from Iraq? Because I know that before the wars and all that, that Iraq used to have similar shops where you could go in and, and they used to have it displayed on the walls and all sorts. Did you ever try that, well, Iraqi well, hash? Uh, the, 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 there's, there's, when, when you go back to the days of, of, the, Pakistan, of the Lebanese hash trade, uh, then, then yes, then you could see it back then because they were making their own hash. But in yeah. the uh, uh, in this century, or, or the, uh, 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 a reefer man went there and made made hash for the for the for the Iraqis and grew some plants okay. for the Iraqis. And from there, that hash came from. I don't know which what you're talking from the old school days or from the new days. More, more they, old they, have, school. they have they have they have a, a no man's land, and that's where he grew in no man's land. Between the fighting Iraqi, uh, what do you think of Reef Abad, uh, Joe? Do you think he's a good character for us to possibly try and talk to, or is he? No, he's a racist. He's he's a, he's the his father was the number one racist in Canada. I have the video, and uh, 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 bombs were put were sent to him at his house and at his father's house. And so, uh, yeah, uh, he, I heard all that, but apparently now he's renounced it, said it was an environment that he was brought up in that he now knows is wrong. Uh, okay, that, let me just tell you, stuff. he's one of the biggest cut, he, he, one of the biggest cutthroat pieces of shit that I've ever met in my life. I had an no, opportunity, we'll, we'll, we'll skip it then. <laughs> I have an, op I'll tell you what he did. I had an opportunity to get a, a, a an agricultural license. And be and greenhouses and a college where I could teach, and uh, greenhouses that I just had to refurbish, and getting a medical medical license in Malaga outside of Malaga, it's a socialist state, and I got an office and a phone. All that was free, and all I had to do was invest the money into the grow. And uh, uh, I, I I was talking to Reefer Man uh, about it, uh, trying to, connecting with, with him to see if and I could get him in a deal. And after talking to him, I said, you know what? I, and I told him to him on the phone. I said, the first thing you're going to do is gonna, you're going to stab me in the back and try to steal this deal. And that's exactly what he did. And the guy that I introduced him to, someone who I knew from 1970 in Kathmandu, he opened up the yin and yang restaurant in Kathmandu, put up the money for the yin and yang restaurant. The day it was open, right? His visa ran out and he never got another visa again. So that guy, uh, 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 I forget his name, but I I'll remember it in a second. He, he just totally out ripped off my buddy uh, 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 Curry, uh, totally outright, Nepali style. You know what I mean? So they, the, uh, I went to him. I said, and he's the one that offered me the deal. I said, wow, man, let's let's do that. And so I sent Reefer Man over there, and, uh, and the first thing he tried to do was cut me out of the deal, turn my friend against me. And I, and, I, and I said to them, look, 
the 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 only thing I want is a, a, an insured guarantee that I'm going to get my percentage for putting this deal together. Uh, and then they count. You're being greedy. You're being no. I wanted you to fucking sign a contract and keep your word to it. In the end, in the in the end, I I realized I had two poisonous snakes in my hands, one in each hand, and the only thing that I could do was to throw both of the snakes away from myself as far as possible. That's what I did. That's what I did. I went to the lawyer who was in who was involved in the deal. Uh, he was supposed to be the olive oil king of, of Spain, very rich guy. And I explained to him what went down, how I, I didn't want to be involved, the, how the, 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 the position I took. But Curry was my, year, my friend for 50 years. After that, it's been more than a decade now. I haven't spoken to him since. So, yeah, the, this guy, Frenchie Cannoli, is a good actor. He wasn't there... You know, I have a friend, uh, 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 Rod Fry. He he taught the Nepalese how to bat press, how to bat press the a hash, uh, a resin, Afghani style. When they when they did that, that was in the mid seventies. When they did that, uh, it improved hash making technique, ten you know a hundredfold. You know what I mean? Because now everything was consistent. It was sieved. And then batted the resins. They they put the 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 resin in a in a, a thick plastic bag, and they would just beat the resin to release the oils, and then they would put it in forms and then press it, and then roll it with a with an iron pr uh, roller, you know. And that hash comes. You see it now. It, it's the best hash that's made in Nepal, and it's made Afghan style. He Rod did more to improve hashish than anything that, that uh, uh, Frenchie Cannoli ever did. Frenchie Cannoli came out of the agricultural industry. You know? So he, he, he had a game plan. He, he, all of the, everything about him, he, that he did this, that he lived in India, all that is all bullshit. It's all bullshit. Well, I just saw nobody, pop up nobody knows him in India. They, they know him now. You know, but they didn't know them then. You know, and and uh, 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 so yeah, basically uh, uh, the scene is all made up. And, and now we have a, no, a new younger generation like Jeff, and <laughs> they want to learn learn all the methods. And immediately they come back with the with with the nylon at wedding dress prices, the bags. Yeah. The bags immediately they come back with the bags. They even, uh, 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 I mean, uh, you know, I hey, just can I, you. Joe, can I just say something really quick? Yeah, the people for the people who like they either idolize or worship these cannabis celebrities, especially the people that are from my generation, I just want to say that you don't actually know those people, and that shit has been put in front of you. And regardless if you feel like you have respect for them or not. When you have new information, you have to be you have to be honest with yourself and really decide who should be idolized in this industry. I'm not talking about one person specifically. What I'm saying is if you're going to be spending your money with certain people, if you're going to be spending your time and devotion learning their techniques and methods, you need to know who that person is. And if you've been worshiping somebody who is a piece of shit, it's not too late for you to see the light. And that's really all I got to say. The thing about well, it is, I, is that I, all you say... do is show, show, have people look at the factory, Park Davis, on the, on, the, on the Park Davis factory on the Detroit River, and where they made tinctures, cannabis tinctures. And then you see it. That's just a, a small view of how big that industry was prior to prohibition. The only reason that they made it illegal is because it was out of patent during during the uh, 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 the alcohol pro prohibition. Uh, pot became very very popular. Nothing made pot more popular than the prohibition of alcohol. They had pot parties, tea houses. That's where all that those words come from. Uh, a yeah. pot, the word pot, comes from a, a Moroccan expression that says 
because there everybody has a pot where they keep their buds and their tobacco uh, chopped up to, so that they can smoke in their sipsies. And one of the one of the greedy one of the when they leave, they'll say, "May your pot may uh, may never be empty. May your pot stay full." So that's where the word pot comes from, you know. But yeah, but they're, Joe, they're, they're listening got... to the wrong people. The, the, you, you have a lot of people that have that have uh, spent year, thirty years in prison for having the freedom that you have today. Yeah, Joe, you know, can I just and... say we've got today we've got a number of questions for you um, that so we could do a little question and answer um, session. Well, let me just finish um, with French cannoli, and then we'll go. Oh with yeah, sorry, go, go with him because. Uh, uh, that he's a, a a real example of 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 what's wrong in the industry. He had the money to go around to make videos so that they can they can uh, make impressions on the people who have, have no clue about hashish or anything at all. The only uh, the the only thing that pro the prohibition of cannabis did was allow the the pharmaceutical companies to DNA sequence it and separate the medicines from it. Now it's legal again, but you can't get a good weed. Before you could buy it right in the pharmacy with a, with a legal prescription. You could buy it. You know, it was very very inexpensive. And and you know, if you if you, I have a book that shows you all the medicines and all the prices and everything from back in the day. You see, everybody here is that they're not they don't, they're not, they don't follow their history. Cannabis has a real long history. It's in the Mahabharata. It's been used as medicine for, uh, on the Ayurvedic Indian scene and the Chinese scene for six thousand years. It's well documented. And, you know, people have been using cannabis for PTSD. You know, for six thousand years, Alexander the Great gave it to his troops. And to help them sleep and to help them rest. So like, so here, man, there's been so much, so many phonies. You have Top Dog. You have a guy talking about strains that he wasn't even born when those strains were being grown. You know, I we had one guy come in, uh, uh, Top Dog, and 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 the guy, actual farmer who who created who uh, 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 no the uh, blueberry. And the farmer who actually created it, we confronted uh, the guy who takes who, DJ Short, and he he was you know he, he could, there was nothing that he could say. There was nothing that he could say. It's just like this top dog. I mean, there's nothing that he can say. I mean, you know, uh, if he got it from seed, but from a from bag seed in Crested Butte, well, then he got it from me, not indirectly, but he got it from me. You know what I mean? And because we were the ones that did that seeding at the uh, at the uh, University of, of Kansas in Hayes, Kansas, <laughs> that that seeding led to most a lot of the stuff that you see today. You know, and that was, you know, we had all seeds from all the different things that we were selling at the time and all that was land races. So we put out all land races in those cornfields in Kansas, and all kinds of shit popped out of it, you know, uh, 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 cat piss. I mean, you know, <laughs> now they call it. <laughs> they make new names as they go along. You know, dog shit, a diesel, ga uh, the 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 some of the stuff that came out. It smelled like it had been stuck in a gas tank, uh, hidden in a gas tank of gasoline, and now it had developed that odor. No, it didn't develop that odor. That was the odor that the weed created itself. So, I mean, when you when you listen to anybody in the 80s or 90s or 2000s that say they did anything, they didn't do shit. They didn't do shit. All that stuff was was land race strains from from strains that were brought into the U.S. And that's where Skunk Man uh, 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 did the research in in uh, in Amsterdam at the Horta Farm, the only license in the world. Uh, to have a medical license to make pr produce medical seeds, right? And he, I, I thought he was wanted by the FBI. Uh, he was wanted for a, a, a drug bust in 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 in, in, Cal in California, and nobody sponsored him more than the DEA. But yeah, that's the thing with the 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 whole Frenchy cannoli. Whenever I see his uh, his name and what he's doing, 
He built this five thousand dollar, six thousand dollar refrigeration machine, all uh, 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 kitchen quality, you know, kitchen, and and it had a spigot at the end. And then when you opened up the spigot, the 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 separation that the what was separated, the liquid that was separated with the resin was was run through bags. <laughs> I have a picture of Mark Emery uh, uh, from Cannabis Culture Magazine who had one of our machines take that machine and 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 then run the machine with through bags, which makes no sense. Hey, no. Jim, while we're on this topic, that's one of the questions. Since we can, so we can just flow with this. Um, basically, just kind of go in a little bit more in detail about the uh, the filter that you're using at the end and all that stuff because I think people for some reason they just can't seem to grasp what you're saying basically if correct me if i'm wrong you 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 agitate the material at the top and then it goes through a five micron filter down into no, okay. a, there's a in, in the machine there's an inside chamber okay. and in that inside chamber it, it's 150 micron screen right it's 150 micron screen and uh, that separates the plant matter from the oils and the falling trichomes. And then the oils and the falling trichomes will go through a, 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 a bladder that goes into a tube and the tube goes into a cruet. And so the oils in the cruet, uh, oils and the resin glands are collected in the cruet. That cruet uh, uh, we run through a five micron coffee filter. The only filter that we use is a five micron coffee filter. We use a screen only to separate the plant matter from the falling trichomes. It's the same thing in, in Lebanon. They have a, they have a screen that, uh, that's made into a table and they'll, they'll run the, the material through the screen and that separates the seeds and, and the stems. Then they take that separation that that uh, uh uh that separation and then they 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 sieve that through a bigger screen and then they re-sieve that what they just sieved from that bigger screen separating the plant matter from the trank from the trichomes they run it through another screen so then you only get the fine fine hash out of it so there's only like two screens in their process so Mila, when she invented her isolator, she added to, she copied the 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 uh, Lebanese method. She's copied the Lebanese method on two th different things. Her her tumbling device was a was a, a Lebanese technique. They may had a big like fifty gallon barrel, and they put screen around the barrel, and they just would uh, 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 they made it uh, where they could turn the the barrel. Uh, circular and they put material in the barrel and then the, tr the trichomes will fall through the 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 screen and then they would take that and and process it uh, the the when they when the lebanese uh, uh, took their hash and processed it they 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 heated the the trichome they heated the resin before they pressed it or they put the resin in a in a in a cotton bag and then they 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 heat, uh, they steam the bags with with, uh, with 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 heat, right? And then they would press them. They would press the bags out for any of the water that was in there, and or there would be no water. It would just be soft stuff. And then they would press it into the form of the of the bag. And so you used to get bags with with uh, with camel. Uh, uh, camels on them or cherry stamps or this in those days the smaller the bag the bigger the 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 best but the better the 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 the, uh, the hash if you got a uh, 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 sacks that were that had you know uh, a kilo in it or a, a, a half a kilo or something like that then uh, that was like a, a, a a more of a commercial quality but when you got those little bags you had that gummy red uh, uh, Lebanese hashish that you never see anymore. When was the last time you've seen that? Some of that gummy red. I know I haven't seen it since the sixties. You know what I mean? And uh, 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 in those days, you used to get really the finest quality cannabis products that were produced in, in cannabis producing countries from all over the world, and they had been doing it for for centuries. 
and, and made doing it for the last hundred years and selling it to the pharmaceutical industry, who then would make products that they would sell to you. One of the biggest uh, 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 trades at the time was the ganja and hashish trade from, from, the, from the Middle East and the Far East and from India and stuff. And all of that was exported to the pharmaceutical companies in England and the United States. So you don't have that anymore, you know, so it's, uh, but yeah, we, we only use a five micron coffee filter. When you use a five micron cof coffee filter, the oils that are, are released in the method get, re get reintroduced back into the hash. So we, we, we end up pulling nearly 100% of what you started with, oils and hash. But they've taught everybody wrong. They've, you know, uh, they think, they tell you, oh, you have nine bags, you have nine different qualities of, of hashish. No, you don't. You have nine different uh, grades of, of trichome, of broken up pieces of trichome in varying degrees. And what you get in the end is green. You know, because it's been planted, it's been uh, contaminated with plant matter. When you make it, when you, when you go get good hash, you never see green. You know, when you look at your trichome, you never see green. You see clear, cloudy, and amber. Hey, Joe, would you uh, maybe talk about the difference between your hash and what dry sift is? Okay, dry sift, uh, uh, with dry sift is, is uh, basically buds that are tumbled in a, in, in a, a tumbler. And then they get the the uh, the trichomes out through 150 micron screen that and that engulfs the whole barrel. The barrel is basically a frame with 150 micron screen on the frame. Now, uh, there's two ways of doing this. You can take the 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 the, the resin glands that you've collected with your 150 micron screen, and 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 then uh, just uh, 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 steam it. You just put it in big bags and put it in boiling water and get it hot, you know, warm. And then you can build a metal frame, a piece of steel on the bottom and another, a metal frame that fits on top and another piece of steel that fits on the top of that. So you have a frame, say four inches by a six, four inches by eight inches, right? Of a metal frame, empty metal frame. Then you have a piece of steel below it. You put the frame on there, fill that with resin. You know, I put plastic in there, but, uh, 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 and fill the, the, uh, the frame up with, with resin. And then, and then I fold the, the plastic over it. And then I take the top, the other piece of, uh, of metal, and I put it on top of that. And then I put it in a, a, uh, a, a book binding press, and then I pressed it. When, when, the, when you apply the steam to the resin, uh, uh, it gets it sticky and it releases the oils. And so it makes everything stick faster. When you beat it, it's like the Afghan method of beating the resin to, re to release the oils. And then you, they, they press it into block forms. You know what I mean? So with a, with a, when, with a big setup of a... Uh, of a uh, of a, a, a tumbler, so you had a big one. You know, I if you wanted to make the really really good hash, I would I would put the screens around the around the the frame of the tumbler at 120 micron. Like I have screens that you can put on my machine that are 120 micron. It just makes a finer finer uh, 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 product in the end. But you still have that stuff that you that you separated from before that from that you that you can make into hash. So you you know you the say you you use a screen you you tumble it with a hundred and fifty micron screen right. So now you have that. Now you tumble that in a hundred and twenty micron screen. But the stuff that you have left over from the hundred and fifty micron you can press and then you can press the stuff from the 120 micron. The 120 micron stuff is nicer, pre a stronger, great hash. And the one under 150 micron is great hash, beautiful, everything good. But the one that was done with the 120 micron uh, 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 is, is, is a little finer, you know? So that's another way of doing it. But the, 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 the Pakistanis, they have a hole in the ground 
and inside the hole, underneath the hole in the ground, they have charcoal, and in the in the in the they have a uh, a copper pot that fits into this huge hole, and then they have a log, a log uh, set up on a seesaw, and so and the, at the top of the at the top of the the, the seesaw log, there's a uh, 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 like a uh, a beater, uh, like a a plunger that can plunge in with it and hit and beat the hash. So uh, while it's heating, it's being beat. The same bat press technique in Afghanistan, but on a larger scale. And then they take that resin once it's been beat and they put it in a metal frame and then they roll it and they press it. That's what you see when you see hash from Pakistan. It's black on the outside, but gold on the inside. Yeah. Right. You, if you buy hash from Afghan from Pakistan, and you get it, it's black on the outside and and green on the inside. Well, then you've gotten some indica hash, and all it'll do is put you to sleep. Yeah, I've seen yeah. both types, Joe. It, it, in in Afghanistan and Pakistan, they had and and uh, the indica plants are small plants. I'm growing some now. They're bush like. They're you know, uh, uh, they're not really big like a, like a sativa. What the Afghans did and the Pakis did is they bred the Indian sativas to the to the indicas, and so then you got a hash plant. But that was done so many hundreds of years ago. Who knows when that was done? But it was definitely there was an introduction between the two different strains because they're so different. What do you think the red gummy was? Uh, from Lebanese. Oh, that's right. You said Lebanese. Lebanese. That the Lebanese have, uh, 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 was famous for their hat for their red Lebanese. That's what they're famous for. The, they have a red Lebanese and they have a gold Lebanese. It's like I just said, the red Lebanese is the finer strain and the gold Lebanese is the 100. Uh, uh, they, say they use 120 uh, as an example with a tumbler, you use the 120 micron screen to reprocess the stuff that you've already separated from the 100 on a 150 micron screen. So the, the, the 120 micron screen, that stuff may come out red. The stuff that you did in the 150 micron screen will probably be blonde, blonder. Good, gets you stone, tastes good, everything good, but not, a, not as fine as that gummy red. So that's a, that's a way of doing it. The 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 I sat in in the in, in the tribal zone and pressed up three hundred pounds, and I uh, I had bodyguards and uh, they, 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 in the tribal area, they uh, uh, they they have a place that's designated for hash pressing, and they pay to use it. When they pay to use it, they bring the resin in. They bring their bodyguards around with AK 47s while the pressing is being done. The the stuff is being uh, protected in case because somebody could come in and just rob you. It's the fucking tribal zone, man. That's like a no man's place. It's like all tribal stuff, and you know. Uh, so anyway, uh, 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 but you know, I would sit there and watch them. I saw them watch it. It's a, a, a basically got like a two huge logs. One that's that's on a seesaw where I could where I could be used with the other log is is uh, is, uh, is, uh, is used like a seesaw to bang the hash and beat it and beat it and beat it. When it beats it, it releases the oils and then they press it. And it, underneath the that copper pot, there's charcoal so to keep it hot. So when they press that hash, it's it's hot. You know that's why you get black on the outside and gold on the inside because uh, the outside has been heated and pressed and it got dark it got cooked you know and that's the that's the pakistani method the afghan method well, howard writes about that in his book in mr nice i remember reading about that method yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, well howard howard was uh, uh 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 was one of the biggest smugglers out of pakistan yeah he, he moved a lot of, he had, a, he had a lot. I moved everything by truck overland to India. I was getting, I'm paying 20 bucks to, uh, for Afghani pollen, for Afghani resin uh, 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 pressed in, in the tribal zone. I only got the stuff that was gold on the inside, not the stuff that was green, you know. Uh, but, you know, the, the, uh, 
So when Marx did his thing, he had like three or four different qualities. He had the gold quality, he had the green quality, and he had a black quality. All those other qualities, all they did was put you to sleep. You know, but yeah, Howard moved a lot, a lot of Pakistani. I actually know uh, uh, Howard from the days of uh, the Colombian days because one of my friends uh, knew Howard and they did a load uh, to Colombia from Colombia and it got into to uh, uh, to the UK, but it got busted. And the only one that got away with it, uh, with their share was was uh, was Marx. Howard Marx, and in his book, he, 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 he let it out that he had gotten his share out before the, whole, the, bus, the big bus came down. And, and my friend, who actually was the one who shipped it, and who had, been, who had gotten stopped himself on an IRA a check post in the, in, the, in, the, in the 70s, the IRA were blowing shit up all over the place. And so they had check posts coming into London, and they would make you open up your boot and and he ended up opening the you know he ended up getting busted with some of that load that Colombian load and he ended up doing some time in Brixton, but he knew Howard very well and I grew up with that guy, yeah you know, I went to high school with that guy I know him my whole life and so the 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 so I go back and then my, of course uh, 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 Victoria and John Chick worked for uh, with Howard and and Victoria's girl a boyfriend was Howard uh, Marx's like main guy. Uh, big Mick, and uh, he was uh, uh, the guy who did all the work for him in the, in Asia, you know, in Nepal and stuff. And uh, uh, so I I have ties to him a long time. The only thing I regret is that when I met Howard, I didn't I had some great hash, but I I I, I, I didn't feel, you know, I was still going coming from the drug war, and I didn't trust anybody. <laughs> Basically, you know. People here in, in, in the in the West, they don't know how how uh, 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 hideous and, and how it was man's greatest inhumanity to man was the making of Mother Nature illegal and then been selling you chemical concocted copies ever since. You know, so I mean that that was like a, a great uh, 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 crime against humanity because everybody at that point could grow their own medicine or at least go to a to a pharmacist and get herbs and, and whatever you needed. And they had a motor, motor and thistle and they made up your medicine right there on the spot. You know, that was much better than what's happening today. So yeah, the, 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 there's a different way that uh, the, the hash that comes out with when you're using uh, uh, a dry sieve, it comes out very clean, very clean. Nothing comes out clean, cleaner than the, the the uh, the ice method d d done correctly. I mean, I press it up. I have a press that it makes about uh, twenty gram pieces, and uh, uh, I have pictures of it on my on my uh, on my book on my page that you can see, and you can see the pieces there. That, and I have a little press that I made to make those little pieces. I bought the actually I bought the press on the internet. It has, it has, a, it's, it's basically the copy of a Pakistani press, except the ones that we did were all made from steel and, you know, were handmade, you know, those, uh, uh, uh frames and the, uh, the iron pieces, but yeah, the, they, you can buy small ones on the internet and I, I, uh, uh, and use it to press your resin. Again, I put, instead of using plastic, I use, uh, butcher paper. You know the, the that they sell in the stores. Oh uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I I put the little pieces of butcher paper in there. Put the resin inside that, wrap it up, put the top piece on, and then I put it in my book binding press. And it comes out in a special and straight and straight up squares. You know, like like the uh, uh, like we used to get. <laughs> you know, uh, there's many of those pictures on my book in my. Uh, on my page that you can put up and you can also uh put up a picture of me i have some pictures in my book that you could probably copy from from the my facebook you know uh that you could probably uh and if you go to my name joe pietri then they, they have all my files that you can get and plenty of pictures there and uh uh yeah the the hash that the, what they call hash today isn't even hash it isn't even hash you know, that's why now Nepalese hash 
is if you can get it uh, is like you know is as much as the best ingrow uh, homegrown or indoor grow you know absolutely and another thing that's the that's a that's a a, a misnomer is that uh, outdoor indoor is better than outdoor no that's no no complete no, no, bullshit no, no. that's complete <laughs> bullshit if you have the perfect uh, perfect situation and you're growing in a climate controlled greenhouse and i've done mm -hmm. it myself i've grown the same strain indoors and i've grown under hbs's and, and then i grew the same strain uh in my greenhouse and uh, 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 it was, uh, I, the test came out for the, my uh, lemon kush at 17, near, you know, just under 18% uh, uh, THC when, and, you know, not very much production. But when I got, uh, uh, did it outside, it was nearly 21% THC and uh, uh, I got a lot. And, the, and Nothing beats sun grown and soil grown. Nothing but beats sun grown. Nothing beats sun grown, and most of the weed that we got back in the day was sun grown. Yeah. All of it was sun grown. All sun grown uh, 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 land races. You know, uh, it breaks my heart to see a lot of these factories kitted out with LED lights. To be honest. <laughs> oh yeah, and, and, and they're, they're, they're selling they're selling you a bunch of, a bill of goods on everything that you buy in the in in the in a dispensary. But nobody knows where it's coming from unless somebody could you have someone on in the group that's only doing land races and doing f1 and there's just not that many people that do that anymore have you heard of this uh apparently they're taking contaminated product uh re-cleaning it up and then selling it selling it again i mean th and they're trying to somehow you know justify it i'm not exactly sure who's all doing it but I just seen like a viral post on Instagram, someone talking about how people are like remediating their tainted cannabis and then selling it again. Yeah. I saw they yeah. were doing low temperature rosin pressing of contaminated flowers. Is that what you're talking about, Jeff? I don't know. I, no, I, no, I, I don't know anything about that, this, this, this idea, but when, when stuff is bad, I throw it away. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I don't believe that they clean it up of all. But the, another thing is that nobody tests their stuff. You know, I mean, here in Oklahoma, nobody tests their stuff. People on the black market, nobody's testing their stuff. On the legal market, they are testing their stuff. I don't think that that, uh, that, that reprocessed, cleaned up weed you could sell in California. Yeah. Or that reprocessed weed you could sell in Oregon. Or that reprocessed weed you could sell in Massachusetts or Michigan, where they have a legal system and everything gets tested. No, 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 no. The, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, in Michigan, they used to have a, a, uh, a cup, a medical cup. And I, I, I won it once with my Durban poison. And then I won uh, the butt of the month with my, uh, uh, uh sour cherry my cherry og and uh, uh uh they had a good scene everything tested you know if you you don't you know you can't talk about your weed unless you have it tested you know a lot of times you have when you have it tested you see that it's just pure thc and i'll give you something that's that's completely uh uh uh, uh, uh full cannabinoid pro uh, uh profile and it's 17 or 19 percent thc and it gets you higher than the stuff you just got got it uh, uh that's supposed to be 28 percent thc hey joe uh do you mind if we do a couple questions yeah go ahead um so, so one of the things people want to know is in your opinion what are the most psychedelic strains the the sativa is like the the stuff from africa the stuff from india the uh, uh south american stuff very psychedelic the 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 in the Indians uh, 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 use cannabis as a sacrament, and not only as a, me a, me a medicine but as a sacrament. And so, uh, 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 you know, they, they they wanted to have a, a religious experience when smoking, so they had they grew these strains that that you know they got you uh, very very high. You know, and you know, you people. Some people, when they're meditating, they go to the temples. You know, they 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 uh, 
that that's what they want they want to have that experience they want to have that uh, the energy basically uh, the energy when you have that energy we that we that gets you up and going that's when you see the when you have the psychedelic experience from cannabis but i have some stuff that's that's nearly 30 percent full cannabinoid profile that you know is very very psychedelic you know but i like the the stuff that's that's about 20%, 17, 18, 19% THC that has a full cannabinoid profile, then I can work all day. I can function. I can, you know what I mean? I can do the dishes, wash the car, you know, <laughs> have the energy to do it. But if I'm soaking the dumb weed, you know, I might as well be home all day. Realistically, you know? I don't think anyone, unless they've traveled outside of America and gone to a, a cannabis producing region, I don't think they've actually smoked anything like what you're talking about right now. No, they haven't. And not only that, they're they're accustomed to not having it. So when they get it, they have a psychedelic experience and they don't like it because it's too it's too energizing. They've been smoking these this dumb weed for so long, they don't know what the good stuff is. It's like when you just eat McDonald's every day for a year and then you actually yeah real food you know your your taste buds go crazy <laughs> yeah the the uh because this is the mcdonald's of weed is basically what that, we're that, about. that's the that's the uh the acapulco gold the colombian goals that that uh, colombian reds that, that was all psychedelic weed all the weed that you get from africa is full cannabinoid profile is all psychedelic weed the weed in india is psychedelic weed you know weed in thailand super psychedelic weed dude <laughs> Yeah, I remember, like, you know, when you I remember smoking, smoking Thai sticks and, and one joint was, was enough, you know, for a dozen people to get twisted, <laughs> you know, it you was know, one hit stuff. People smoking, they weren't smoking fucking gelato cake. They were probably smoking some Indian sativa with their acid, you know, like the two went together. Exactly. I remember I had this guy, he was a, he was a, he went on to become a prison guard and work at Rikers. He was a good guy. Uh, uh, but that was, his tr tr uh, that's what he grew up to be. But uh, uh, I remember giving him a hit of Thai weed. And he said to me, man, what did you just give me? Is, is that acid? I said, no, man, that's just really great weed. <laughs> <laughs> he never smoked anything that strong in his life. The Thai weed was really psychedelic. You know what I mean? It was just incredible weed. Incredible weed. Yeah, old Timer once said he had some haze. He said he had a particular haze that was prone to some hermaphrodism, but he kept it purely well, yeah, because yeah. the high was like acid. Right. That's the, 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 that's why they call it the haze. Yeah. You know, that's the name for the haze. So, so you get like a, like the afterglow of LSD. E, well, you get, in a way, you, you, you get, it's visual. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. It's visual. You don't get the like the. It's not as strong as LSD, but you get a lot of the visual stuff. Yeah, like you like. I think Blue Skies is. I want to try the Malawi, like because Blue Skies. Yeah, the, the Malawi that I told Joe about. That is the only only one that I've had that did give definite visual disturbances, as it were, like little green traces sort of thing. Off the side yeah, of the exactly. Picture. Red traces. <laughs> I I I I was in Malawi a couple of times, but I was in Malawi. Uh, uh, three years ago and I collected a bunch of, of, of Malawi uh, that I've yet to test and I'll be testing it here soon. But I, you know, it's uh, in Malawi, uh, there are fields of cannabis everywhere, but you know, the, the uh, it's a very poor country. And so, you know, they don't take care of it at, like they should, you know? And so I had to really walk and find, to find the field that was really a farmer that I that I could relate to, but everybody grew grew cannabis a, a, a around their houses because basically they could sell it no matter what it was in, in Malawi to any tourist. You know what I mean? <laughs> it didn't really matter. It's like Hawaii. You know, yeah, you know, it's uh, uh, you know they never have. Have you ever had the cob, Joe? The Malawi cob that they kind of ferment underground. Well, uh, 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 I'm glad you said that, Blue Skies. The the yes. And the, the Malawi cobs, they had the same thing in Nepal. They had the Nepali cobs. They would, they would, they would take a weed and they put it in a, 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 a make like a corn, a, 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 
a corn husk, make it the size of a corn husk, and then they would take uh, banana leaves around it or well, some kind of leaves that they would wrap it in and then twist it and then wet it and then let it dry. And then, it, and then it would dry there over the, over the course of a few months. And then when they got it, it was that, and you peel the, the leaves apart, it was really compressed and really, you almost needed a, a, a pipe to smoke it. It wasn't like you could roll joints up with it because it was really crumbly. It got really mm -hmm. crumbly. But then when you got it fresh, you could make joints. But still, uh, uh, it's, that's a technique that they've been using. Where it came from, probably came from India, you know, but they do it in Malawi too. I'm but glad you brought that same, up. Guys, same, ex it? same exact technique. Um, you know? I used to go to one guy in Kathmandu and he, he sold uh, hemp products, brooms and, uh, and anything made from hemp he sold and he had weed, you know, and he had those, those uh, cobs. And that was that was basically the best weed you can get in town. And the sadhus really liked it because the, uh, they wouldn't have to crumble it up; they could just crush it up, smoke in their chillums, and it was really strong weed. So yeah, yeah. That, but that, so whether it's from Africa your, uh... originally, I don't think so. I think that everything in, in in Africa, when it comes to weed, came from India. Hey, Joe, would you talk about um, how you do your curing? That's a question for me, for sure. And also, like, how that compares to different curing methods that you've seen throughout the world? Well, the thing about it is, is that here in the States, they, uh, uh, they can't get it to the shelf fast enough. Whereas before in Oregon, everything was jarred and then bur burped. So, I mean, I, I do it with five-gallon buckets. I have these buckets that that screw with screw on tops. And so I'll, I'll put a, a, a turkey bag inside and then I'll fill it with, uh, you know, with, you know, a uh, 75%, you know, it, it, I've let it hang on buds, you know, until, until the, until the uh, stem snapped just before the stem, the stem snapped. It was getting there. Then I would cut. I would cut it into buds, and then I put the buds in a fifty in a five gallon bucket that I had a screw top with a turkey bag inside the turkey bag. I put the weed, and then I would leave the turkey bag open, or I would tighten up the turkey 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 uh, turkey bag, tie it into a knot tight, put it in there, and then open it. Well, for at first I would leave the turkey bag open, and then I would seal it and I close it, but it wouldn't it wouldn't. Uh, 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 tie the bag up. Once it started to get really, really dry, drier, that you could see it, you know, it dried uh, 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 more, then I would tie the bag up and I would put it in the thing and I would burp it as well. Once it was in the turkey bags, the thing about doing it with turkey bags or doing it with uh, 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 with jars is that the, the, the weed doesn't turn brown. It stays green, but you have to do it right. You can't just, you know what I mean? You just can't hang it. You got to cut it and then you got to burp it. So when I had been, and when I had it in those five gallon buckets, once a day, I would open them up and let them breathe. And then I'd shut them up. And then once they got, it got really dry, around 85, 90% dry, then I would put it in a knot and make it tight. And then I would put it in the, in, in, in the bucket and leave it until I was ready to use it. In Oregon, they, they, uh, the, to sell the weed, it has to be real, you know, dirt, it has to be dry. People don't, I like to buy my weed like it's 90%. I, my, I like to keep my weed about 90% dry. And then when I, when I open it up and I go to smoke it, I'll let it sit for a while and dry out a little bit. Or I'll dry it out one day and the next day I'll smoke it. You know, that's what I do. Uh, 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 but yeah, at one point in, in Oregon, the only thing you could get was stuff that was at least 90 to 180 days burp dried, where they have those, uh, 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 uh jars, those screw jars with the tops screw on and, and put the buds in there. And, and basically you open them up and air them out, you know, twice a day and then shut it up at night. 
you know, so it, 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 that works really well. But nowadays they can't get it to the shelf quick enough. You know, I, I spend at least a month curing it to the level that I'm talking about there. I mean, uh, uh, drying it takes a couple of weeks to dry, a good circulation. Uh, 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 sometimes I'll put in a dehumidifier, but a, a, if I put in a dehumidifier, you have to be very careful because you don't want it to get too dry. But if you want to hasten the drying period, then you could you could uh, 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 put a dehumidifier, but a very uh, not a very powerful one like you have in those greenhouses. Something as little power as possible that just sucks out the water every day. You empty it, you know what I mean, and that'll that'll hasten your drying. But then at some point you have to uh, clip it off the bud, put it in turkey bags, put it in a big five gallon bucket, screw tops and just burp it. You know, that's what I would do, but on a bigger scale that some people do uh, uh, would do with those uh, with jars, you know, and I've done it with jars too. In fact, I have some pictures of me with some of my jars, uh, 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 you know, and the thing about it was, is that my weed was so sticky that once you put it in a jar, like I had these uh, uh, these little plastic containers that held an ounce, and once I put it, once I put an ounce in there and shut it, when I came back the next day, I could I, and I could take it out. It would come out in one chunk because the buds were so sticky that uh, 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 you know. They just stuck together, so I'd have like a little, a little plastic jar full of buds, but all stuck together. <laughs> Pulled it out, it was all one piece, <laughs> not pressed or anything. It just stuck together, you know. But yeah, that's a good way of doing it for 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 uh, for home smoke. Yo. Yeah. You need to pause it for a second? No, no, I just shut it off. I'm gonna turn my phone off. Okay. Um uh I got some more questions. Um okay. so you know, obviously your technique is so different than than what most people think is the most efficient and best way to grow. So one of the things people wanted to talk about was your nutrients and how you feel about pesticides or what your whole routine is in regards to that because you know everybody has their own method that they think is the best you've got your living soil people you've got your natural farming people you've got your people who run a mix of both you know um <clears throat> you've got a lot of experience you know more than most so if you just want to talk about why you run the way you do well <laughs> The the uh, uh, I want to grow weed as naturally as possible. I want uh, as original as possible. Um, you know, uh, uh, soil. You know, I I I uh, in Oregon you could buy your soil custom made by the yard, and you could buy different formulas. So the. Uh, in Oregon, you could buy weed. You could buy you could buy uh, dirt by the yard, and then and then use it for your for you know, use it for your plantation. And so people would buy you know hundreds of yards of dirt there. It was a big business, and that dirt is completely hand mixed, the uh, hand mixed, in big uh, uh, cement uh, uh, mixers, except that they mix dirt. So all the all the you know. All the the the, the best uh, nutrient uh, are put in and then mixed with the dirt, and then you buy it by the yard. That's one way. I I use uh you know Ocean Forest or Seven O Seven indoors is something you know that I buy, I can buy at a grocery store. Uh, you know, living soil. What I have found in living soil is that you don't for if you if you're growing for yourself at home. And you don't, you're not, you, you know, you're just growing for yourself. And then you living soil, you know, is, is a nice way of doing it because you got very, very clean uh, buds and, and every, you know, everything is under your control and everything is all natural. 
you know, and you've created living soil from all the, the composting you've done, you know, and so, uh, uh, and sometimes in this, and when I have a greenhouse, I use compost. So I, I use compost, I add compost. So, I mean, that's a clean way of doing it, but the production is not big. So you don't get the, as big a bud, you know, you don't get the production that you get when you have concentrated, uh, concentrated formula. And a dripstone is a concentrated formula. Uh, I, uh, uh, it's ionic. So when you mix it with water, it completely dissolves. And uh, it, be, it acts like cannabis blood. So if you're growing and you're giving, you, you, like in living soil, you have to wait for everything to break up. You got to make teas. You got to do this. You got to do that. It's a lot of work. But I'll tell you what. You take your bud, your living soil bud, and you take a bud from dripstone, from with, using dripstone nutrients, the ones that I use now. Uh, 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 I'll outperform you. I'll, I'll 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 be better than you, stronger than you, wider cannabinoid profile, more. Everything will be better. Everything will be better because it's like cannabis blood. It, 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 in South America, we were going to call it sangre de Maria, but it's a Catholic continent and you know you can't say anything about mary so so that, that didn't that didn't work and then what happened to me in south america is that i had great nutrients but then i had to get a a a, a, a license and i've got to have it tested from every in every country that i that i did business with in south america that could be 20 countries so i'd have to do 20 new tests what i did in the other countries that i have to do it in all the countries it's not like america the FDA or anything like that. They don't have that. Every country had its own FDA and its own rules. Complicated. But uh, 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 you don't get to production. But I guarantee that when you use dripstone, you'll never use anything else. Because one, it's easy to use. Two, it has the best ingredients that, 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 a man, that you can buy in the world. I know the people who make the company, the guy who makes the who, uh, son who created this company. Oh, I, I went to high school with this guy. He knew Howard Marks. Okay. And so that, that company there, the products are outstanding. And because the plants get their nutrients faster, right? Everything happens faster. Your plant grows faster indoors. You know? Uh, outdoors, it's just cannabis blood. I mean, uh, 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 you know. So what would you say your, your average yield per plant indoors is? It depends on the plant, on the, on the strain. Of course. So, the, you know, I have some strains that I have. Okay, I have a strain. It's uh, uh, Malawi Gold. It's really good. It has a, a high percentage of THCV. Uh, but it's a thin plant. If you get an ounce or two from one plant, you're lucky, right? So I bred it to my OG and I got a four pounder of one huge bud. I have a picture of it on my, on my Facebook page. That bud was enormous, very little, very little uh, uh, trim, trimming to do. Some leaves made it out, but once you picked out the leaf, there wasn't much to trim. It was all solid bud. You can see the picture of it. It's, it's, uh, you couldn't put both your hands around the flower. That's how big the bud was. And it was, it came off on top, then sort of narrower on top, but then it got fatter in the middle and then narrower. You'll see it. It's, it's an amazing plant. People, people will say it's an outstanding specimen. Well, let me tell you, I had the Malawi farmer who I got it from tell me that he liked that mine better than his. And the, the, what I used uh, 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 was in my OG, you know? So the Africans do go, good with my OG because it, it's, uh, it has that lemon oil, that lemon flavor, and that goes good with tropical flavors. So one of the things I think is like 
for people that grow at scale, you know, they may grow one or two old school strains and maybe one sativa, but for the most part, you know, I don't think that they're, they're just not familiar with the type of plants you're talking about in general, you know, especially stuff like Malawi and stuff. So they, they probably. You're growing those plants. You got to flower them faster. You got to flower them sooner. You know, some people like I just, I just did some, some uh, uh, Africans and uh, 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 I'm thinking right now they're going to be, they're going to be too big for my tent, you know? So. Well, I will say that uh, (laughs) I really don't know how they were able to keep this light schedule from us, but to me, I I a hundred percent agree with you when you say that that's what it took to break through the brainwashing because yeah i'm seeing people come around once they once they listen to what i'm saying about the light schedule and then it clicks in their minds then they look on google and they're reading what i'm saying and they're comparing it and then they see my plants that i'm growing now which have been on your schedule for two weeks and they're they're healthy they're happy you know i think that you're have right. you shown joe those pictures of your plants jeff yeah, I sent him yeah a i've got them i've got them. the first yeah. thing that you'll see with a 12 and one plant is that the plants themselves will tell you they're happier. Well, that's I can it. tell you for sure that's already happened, especially especially the uh, the ones that are in flower. And yeah. even though I grew those on 18.6 to start with, um, you know, I got them in there and they just, they couldn't be happier. So, so I think that, you know, and I can't tell you, Joe, how many people have messaged me directly to get your exact flower schedule and, yeah. and veg schedule because they want to try it and they've already got their timer set up. At least five people have messaged me in the yeah. last 24 hours. Well, they, 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 if you go to Apollo timers, they mm-hmm. have the 12 and one schedule right this on is, there. It's spreading like wildfire. And I think that you're right. Well, it's just been like, well, I've been, I've been, I've been doing this for over 10 years trying to waken people up. Yeah. I, once I've got them w- woken up, they'll start listening to me more because you know why I, th- my 12 and one schedule it was a perfect, perfect paradigm, but it was direct aid to all growers. That was my Joe Pietri 12 and one advanced in, uh, 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 growing techniques, direct aid to all growers. So I put money in your pocket. I don't even know you. And that goes for everyone out there. Listen, and that, and that, and that goes for everybody out there it was, uh, 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 you know, it was something that I, you know, that Shiva told me you need to put this out. And I did. And and I didn't make any money from it. I, I you know what I mean. Well, my room my room stays at an even temperature. My plants yeah. spray constantly. They grow like it. Le- it looks like at least fifteen or twenty percent faster. Um, and they grow like you said. I'm I'm just you know everything you said is true basically. So if people have been listening, yeah, it to grows podcast, wider. It doesn't it doesn't grow to it doesn't uh, reach to the light. So far. I haven't topped my plants, so it hasn't started to get wider yet, but it's only been two weeks. So I'm sure that the growth structure will change. Um, But either way, regardless, um, I, you know, just just saving on the electricity alone, you know, just saving on the electricity alone is massive, especially for people in like Maine. Someone messaged me today saying that in Maine, they just raised the cost of electricity by 80 percent. Yeah. So, the, wow. and this is going to continue to go on as we get further. Right, further. Repeat that again. What did you say about Maine? Someone just messaged me and said that they had electricity costs go up 80%. So this light schedule will help immensely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But the, 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 the thing about it is, is your plants will be happier and, and, and you'll get a better plant because for the first time in your life, you've grown a plant that's not stressed. They also require less water and which means in turn, they're going to eat less. I mean, that's just, well, not, well, not, it's going to give you less work. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because you don't have Thank to go in that. there every day because your lights are eating up all your fucking nutrients, all your, all your liquids. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And, and, uh, 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 it's massive. This is just, it's just, are you using a dehumidifier at all? Uh, I do. I use it in my sealed room. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I have it set up so that I have a, always put that on low. Yeah. Well, I have it regulated so that it kicks on at a certain, um, percent. Oh, nice. Nice. But, uh, yeah, I just keep it for veg. I keep it at like 55, sometimes 60% humidity. 
Um, and the temperature, I, well, especially now with the light schedule, my, my room doesn't heat up. Like, you know, you get to a point where your lights have been on for so long that it, your room just can't handle it. And it's just got this constant high temperature. And now it stays at an even, I think it's like 74, 75, which is perfect all day. And, you know, just that it's just funny to me, you know, how could they, the, the information about phytochromes, how could they keep that from us so easily? Like the fact that there's a pigment in the plant controlling flowering that just, yeah. how could they omit that? Yeah. Because they think you're stupid. Well, they, 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 well, Joe, I want to say, that, I think that, 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 they all think you're um, stupid and, the, and, and, and the, 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 that you, that you're not, you're not going to do the research. You're not going to do the homework. So they give in you methods that that'll give you a result that'll be good enough. Well, that is the thing, Joe. Most people today don't really do much research. So I do want to thank you for coming on our podcast, not just today, but in general, because I'll say this. I used to have a different podcast. Um, and I remember this kind of numbers that we got, the viewership that we got at the same period, because this new podcast we're doing now is relatively new. Uh, people clearly love all your information. They love uh, everything that you've got to say, the, the truth, the honesty, the information about uh, Sam the Skunk Man, about uh, growing in general, because our numbers in terms of views have been spectacular uh, compared to my other podcasts that we used to do in the Good early I'm, days, you know? So yeah, definitely thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because um, finally my message has gone through. And the, re the I realized when I saw my 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 schedule on twelve and one on on Apollo Timers what a, a page, I said, "Wow, look, it's gone mainstream." If it's well, gone many of your videos you've done with us, Joe, are over what? a thousand views now, and this is in the early days. And like the ones that got like uh, that kind of views on the other podcasts we did, it took like a couple of months. So I can see in a year's time, probably most of your podcasts are going to be well in excess of. 5,000, probably 10, up to 10,000 views, if not yeah. more. So, no, I think it's going to be in the 100,000 range, to be honest with you. Oh, we'll get there. I, I hope our podcast will really take hey, off. If, if, we, if, we can reach, if we can reach, we if we can reach that, if we, if, if we can do that, uh, uh, we're, you have to realize we're, we're putting money in everybody's pocket. We're, well, we're not getting it. We're not asking anything for it. Here's the thing. We're I just want to say this for anything to you. For it. you know, we're doing it with direct aid to all growers, you know, because everybody should be able to be, be able to grow their own medicine as cheaply as possible. The, I, you know, at my whole, my, uh, when you go to my website, it's growlikejoe.com. Uh, if you want to know about nutrients, you, you go on the nutrient pay, pay, page, there's two buttons to press. There's one for hobbyists and there's one for uh, commercial growers. And there you go directly to the site and it gives you all the information, all the pictures, all that you do. And then you can buy it right there from the company direct. Right there. Awesome. You just go from my my website right to right, right, uh, right to my direct, right to that to the company. The guy's name is Reggie. He runs the warehouse and stuff. He's an expert. He can tell you everything that you need to know. He'll help you all along. Uh uh. Once you you use dripstone, you'll never go back because it the results are spectacular. I mean, most of the commercial companies now are beginning to use dripstone. A lot of them are now, are converting to dripstone because it's so far a superior product. When you're buying in bulk, 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 like these commercial guys, they cost them like five cents a gallon. It'll never cost you uh, 10, it could be between, uh, you know, six and eight, and I'd be about eight buck, eight cents a gallon to you guys, I guess. I don't know what the difference is, but it's 30% less. So 30%, it would be 30% uh, of, yeah, you would, you would, you would get 30, you would get, uh, uh, it would cost you about eight cents a gallon, maybe eight and a half cents a gallon. I want to say this too, really quick, if you don't mind, I just want to say the reason why I think and maybe it'll take two years or whatever, but the reason why I think this is going to be so popular is because between you and blue skies, you're giving people an opportunity to, to understand cannabis in a way that they have never understood. But I will tell you, if you, I think you guys would agree with me, there's always been an undercurrent of people who are saying this current cannabis culture is bullshit. 
This is oh, what, yeah. what you're what you've been saying this for a decade. Blue skies, you've been saying this for several years. What we're doing right now is all we're doing is talking about something that people have already been talking about for a long fucking time. It's not yeah. new. What we're doing is we're bringing it back up because it's now or never, in my opinion, with cannabis. Oh, it's now the narrative, or never. Is, the narrative has been controlled from a long time before we were even born. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Well, speak about our podcast of you, Joe. Is that I think we could sum it up by saying that there's been uh, this has been the the modus operandi. One, starting with people like uh, Sam Skunkman, uh, Connell Clark, <laughs> etc., is to destroy the genetics, as in make them worse, make them less effective. Two, and be their promote gem- these, put these characters in place. There. And promote mm-hmm. them as heroes, whilst they're teaching poor growing techniques from the Dutch fraud, and then coupled with then they're teaching even worse methods of extraction so that ultimately people's medicine today is um from poor genetics and poorly made so it's like the worst medicine and we're teaching people with your methods how to make the best medicine with improved genetics better growing techniques better extraction methods and so you end up with a better medicine so anybody that's mad at that is just hurting themselves and actually uh, acting in yeah. against their own interests, you know? Yeah, so, exactly. You know, you guys can take this. Information. Go back to the old school genetics, which contain all the old cannabinoids, terpenes, flavonoids, etc. We need to adopt better um, growing methods, such as Joe's 12-1 technique and the extraction methods where you're not losing most of the essential medicine. Exactly. Exactly. So we're doing great things for the community. So anybody talking shit about us is just an idiot. And they don't want things to get better. They have a self, they have a vested interest. They're part of the agenda to keep promoting poor quality genetics and poor quality end result medicine. And you would think that you would think that, that, uh, that once it catches on that uh, the whole scene will change back as far as quality goes, because these, these kids don't know what the quality, what good quality is. They really don't. You know, it's like the flavor of the month, you know, and it doesn't even necessarily have to be the flavor. It could just be the name of a flavor. The flavor of the month is the same as all the flavors in all the previous months. It all tastes the same and it's all crap. Yeah, it's all somebody was very me today about. Somebody was telling me today about a plant they found in one of my packs. It's like tropical juice. It's like a mixture of all pineapple, papaya, guava, mango, lychee. It's... It's, it, people just don't realize the kind of uh, terpene profiles that are available in cannabis because they've just been given such a, a narrow selection of opportunity to try it in dispensaries. And through sort of like people like Berner promoting cookies, where cookies has been promoted as the greatest when it's like one of the worst piles of shit ever, yeah. um, all people are experiencing is this one brand when there are you know, hundreds of different flavors and tip profiles and different highs to experience. And and my buddy has uh, dispensaries in Oregon and he buys directly from the farmers and he he has a select group of farmers that, you know, they don't grow a lot, but they have really nice. And so he's managed to keep his quality up, but most people don't, they go in and most people have just have their own shit that they're growing. They sell in their dispensaries. And, you know, uh, uh, so you, you're, you're taking your chance right there, whether the grower is a great grower or not, you know, because they, they can't wait to get it on the shelf. You know, so it's, it's it's a strange scene and we're going to see how it all happens in the end. But in the end, the one thing that you have done is that you have helped me get the word around because once everybody's on 12 and one, I've cost the, the uh, Dutch marketing fraud. Think about how billions and billions and billions of dollars. So what we're doing right now is only the beginning. Uh, yeah. In my opinion, um, I intend to continue with this work for the rest of my life, you know, honestly. So, I mean, this is cannabis and that's why I said it, what I said at the beginning and I really didn't spit it out very plainly because I am very emotional about it. When you watch someone die because they don't have access to medication and the only medication they have access to isn't medicine. And then you find out that this has literally been part of the plan. Everyone can feel what's going on when they go to the dispensary and it is what it is and you only have these choices and none of them do anything for you. But when you watch someone die 
because they don't have access to medication and what they have access to isn't working. Well, what you got to do, is you got you to go have that experience where you have somebody tell you that this is the first day I've felt my legs in two days and, you know, four days or five days, whatever he told me. You know, because when you have MS, you go through periods where you just, you, your, your legs are working, but you can't feel them. You know, so it's hard to walk if you can't feel what you're doing. <laughs> I, it's impossible, I think, you know, I mean, so. Uh, uh, when you see that and you and you see people get up and go when they haven't been going anywhere you know it's uh you know i kept my uncle alive for a couple of years when they when di they diagnosed him uh for having uh, uh, uh cancer and he should have been dead like years ago but i kept him going you know yeah, I got to say, yeah, I mean, the nicest feedback I always receive is always the feedback that's to do with health. The, the, well, it was good for people. me because, you know, I've always had the reputation in the family as a bad boy. Now I have the <laughs> rep reputation as a healer and a grower. You know what I mean? So I, I like my reputation nowadays better than it was with my family back in the day because, you know, it was, a, it was drug war time, you know. And the funny yeah. thing is, is that uh, another thing that I that I, that I, that I want to do with you guys is I want to I want to uh, 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 you know help to to end the drug war everywhere else as far as not just the United States but also in like places like Nepal and Afghanistan and Pakistan. Pakistan has a big big medical scene going on there now. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't be surprised if Pakistan started to export to the states they want to the the uh uh so it's it, because of the people in asia they're still fighting the drug war you know mm -hmm. they're still fighting the drug war so you know it's it'd be nice to be able to sh to talk to them like i talk to you right now and explain to them the business that they used to have that they could still have today and all you know well, I think you'd be surprised at how many people in these countries are potentially listening to this podcast. So you could tell them right now, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. But the thing about it is that in a, in a country like Nepal, where they're breaking down the doors and burning fields, they're only working for the pharmaceutical companies because the pharmaceuticals don't want you to have don't want you to have the, the knowledge nor the genome that basically grew wild there in the Himalayas. They're patenting those genomes. So whenever you whenever these countries burn go out and burn fields and confiscate everything and do that, they're actually doing the work of the pharmaceutical companies. They're not doing the country of Nepal any good, any any anything. You know, the the importance of Himalayan ganja, they've been used there uh, as Ayurvedic me medicine since time immemorial. During prior to 1940. They, the British government used to come to Nepal, to Nepal Gunj and the border of Nepal, <clears throat> and uh, uh, buy the production of, buy as much as they could get their hands on of, of, of weed and hash that they would then export to the, uh, uh, to the natural business communities, the one in England and the one in the United States. And they would sell their concoctions all around the world. Right. So the that's a big business that's right there, right there waiting for it. But the thing is, is that people in Nepal, you know, they of course they want to go see the Himalayas. Of course, they want to go see the, the temples. Right. Even though the, the earthquake has really damaged Kathmandu quite a lot. It's very been, been overbuilt and stuff. But the 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 people come there and smoke temple balls. <laughs> people there go to be free. The people. Uh, 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 in the 60s and the 70s, they came to Nepal because Nepal was a free place and there was no war there. So, you know, a, a, a big move, a uh, 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 reason that we were so involved in those days with cannabis was the freedom the cannabis, unbrainwashing of cannabis uh, 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 to us. And also being Nepal being the, the one place in the world where we could be free and not have to worry about anything, not have to worry about the draft, don't have to worry about getting busted for a joint. You know, do you good... think there's still people in Nepal to, uh, today making the same kind of uh, traditional Nepalese temple balls? That well, you the Ayurvedic doctors who, who before in Kathmandu, when, when they did 
prescribe hashish, they would go, they would get hash that they had hand rubbed themselves. Yeah. Because those guys, those Ayurvedic doctors are real ones. They went around and collected the herbs themselves. They knew where to go. You know, that's a big thing. Because it's one of my pet hates today. People, and it's, it's funny you mentioned the temple ball because it reminds me, it's actually Frenchy Cannoli who yeah. started calling um, this water hash, ice hash, that he just rolled into a ball, a temple ball. It's yeah. like, on what planet is that a temple ball? It's just a ball of hash. Two it's very different things. But in Nepal, it's temple balls. It's always been known as temple balls. Yeah. Renzi Cannoli is just somebody that's ripping off the community. Do you realize that's he's there? there. That's all he's there for. Is to, and, then, and you're also impressed with a guy who had 90% of what he says he's done, he's never done. He's no longer with us, Joe. He recently uh, died, quite recently died, fairly recently. That was a anyway, good thing. But... Now he's going to have to play, you know, he's going to have to deal with Lord Shiva. You know, <laughs> let him deal with Lord. When I when I leave, when I deal with Lord Shiva, I will have definitely a lot of promotion going with me. <laughs> I've done good for everybody. You know what I mean? When I, when I did my twelve and one uh, direct aid to all growers, there's millions of people that I kept in business, and and I've I've made their medicine cheaper and their medicine better, and you know it was a. Uh, 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 it was all because of Shiva, you know, it was a thing that was a universal gift. It's a universal hey Joe, gift. Um, uh, just because someone asked and we're doing the question and answers right now, someone was talking to me about the Strain Hunters show. And yeah. basically they wanted to know if they ever actually helped any of those villagers where they took all those land races from. Or no, all they did was take the land races and pass out their feminized junk. Because they now they, they when they pass out the seeds there, the farmers would 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 uh, uh, breed it with their own stuff, and yet, guess what? And now it has a genetic marker on it. Yeah, it was all a well planned thing. They when they passed out any seeds, they every village that they went to in Africa, they passed out seeds, and when they passed out seeds, it, it, uh, basically they put that genetic marker. Into, into the system so now you buy stuff there and you'll see that there's some skunk in it oh guess what that has that genetic marker in it then one day they will be dead and one day we'll all be gone and people with their memory loss uh, you know and it, what happened last year is not in anybody's memories uh 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 they'll call their markers in well, they can't remember anything because they're smoking fucking cookies all day long. And well, the thing about it is, is that they're, they're, the, they're not the ones that, 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 that are going to have to remember. It'll be the pharmaceutical companies that have had this game going on. So in a hundred years from now, you know, there'll be nobody like me. You know, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll create a couple of guys that'll, that'll follow in my footsteps and not, no, I think, and I not think do it, not do it for basically a, 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 a as a money making venture. The reason that my that, that I succeeded with 12 and one was the correct paradigm, but uh, was the, 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 uh, the, the, the thing that, you know, it was direct aid to all growers. It's me putting money in everybody's pocket. It's Lord Shiva putting money in everybody's pocket. You know, and, and because of that, it, 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 it uh, you know, it, it worked. It worked. And one day, you know, everybody, will, that'll be a way to grow. Uh, uh, everybody will be growing that way. No one will be growing that stupid 18 and six. That's a, if you're a farmer, you know, where do you get 18 hours of sun, dude? Please. Do you think the people like Sam who are promoting that kind of light and schedule, do you think secretly they were using the real schedule, Joe? Of course. Just giving everyone else the bullshit? Of course. Yeah. Of course, the 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 pharmaceutical guys they have all they, like I said a hundred years from now we'll, me and you will be long dead he'll be dead you know what I mean and the pharmaceutical companies will call in their markers yeah and they invented everything well as soon as they were done with him they discarded him that's why it's it's uh, I uh, you know I I you know that's why I sell F one you know the 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 other day I was looking over at. Uh, at Phylos, because Phylos went through big changes. They bought, got bought out by a company. So 
my my friend Nishan and his partner they probably made some millions. The the they bought out they bought they were bought out by a big company. So so uh, everything is changing there, you know. And then I looked at the their 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 because now they sell seeds and and uh, they had hemp seeds and they had uh, 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 drug strains, you know. They do and feminize, they, right? And they were all feminized. They're all feminized. Uh, I I found that I found that funny, but you know that's where the market is because the Dutch, you know, they don't want you to take their genetics. They, you know, they control their genetics when you buy their feminized shit. You know, I guess they've. You know, I mean, uh, uh, the 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 big monster on the block is the Dutch. The Dutch got people in 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 Holland just sitting there at computers refuting everything that you said everything that's said you know what i mean so it's like it's like weird you know but well my my thing is now is i'm not gonna argue with anybody if they're not if they're under the age of fucking 60 or 50 you know and at the end of the day i'm not arguing with anybody anymore you know fuck all that like i'm not gonna deal with the bots you know what i'm saying i'll just block them and go about my day and and it's funny thing is is that the 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 truth is there all you have to do is seek it and the, the people are not seeking the truth you have to wake them up you have to unbrainwash everybody again. Everybody's been brainwashed by people like to, uh, uh, Frenchie Cannoli, and, you know, <laughs> Mila, you know what I mean? You know, there's the probably a nutrients. lot of I mean, come on. You listen, there's Stop probably a, a lot of people that are sitting there hearing you say that and they're getting really pissed off. But I can tell you nine times, I don't know Frenchie. I don't know any of these people, you know, nine times out of 10, we don't know any of these people and, you know, they idolize people they've never met. So all I'm saying, yeah. do your due diligence and learn about these people. Oh yeah, exactly. The, but you know, that they control the, the airwaves. So like, you know, uh, you, if, when, you know, you, you'll have to go through pages and pages and pages before you get to anything that's not Frenchy cannoli on Google, or you look for the, for bubble bags or those bags, you'll, you'll go through 30 pages of that before you even get the article, uh, uh, if you can find it, you know, bubble bags, the biggest consumer fraud in cannabis history. You know, I've had the Dutch pay people not to print that article. Well, uh, I saw in your THC farmer article, like we were already talking about, because if for the people that don't know, the reason why I reached out to Joe was because I was just reading old forum stuff because I've been interested in this stuff for a couple of years now. So I'm just reading forum stuff because it's interesting to me. I come across Joe's story and then I read several different posts from Joe and then I read articles. And then I also seen in the THC farmer article that Todd McCormick showed up in the discussion and had him booted from the forum. Yeah. And so that's a suppression tactic. I mean, yeah. it, it is what it is. Like, you just have to call it for what it is. He is influencing these people in general, not just one pe- person. They are influencing the blacklisting and the blackballing of anyone who tells the truth. Yeah. Well, that's what's been going on with me because, um, you know, I've heard a lot. I've been contacted by a lot of people. And all they've heard is secondhand information from people with a larger platform. And then they're like, well, I listen to your podcast and it seems like everything they tell me is bullshit. You do have skunk. You do this. You do that. Blah, blah, blah. So but unfortunately, there's been a huge amount of people sort of uh, influenced, as you say, by these fucking characters. That's all they are. Promoted actor characters. It's like I remember when Frenchie burst on the scene. It was like. I mean, what's he really done? He rolled a piece of hash into a cannoli shape and called himself Frenchy Cannoli. And suddenly that not, was like... Not only that, is like the, his hash is shiny because when he yeah. takes pictures of it, he'll take some oil and wrap and, 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 and put it on the piece so it shines really like a lot when, he, when you're taking the picture. So they, they know every trick to get your attention. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what it is. It's trickery, Joe. And that's yeah, the whole all, point of our it's podcast. It's all trickery. And, and the, to, the, main, the main, you know, a Frenchie Cannoli could not have happened without Milo yeah. and, the, and the Pollinator Company. It could never and, have and happened without Ben And all that same crew that we've been Gronkers. talking about, like Kevin Jodry, Kevin Jodry and all that little section in uh, California, uh, Humboldt, they all sort of like 
took him under their wing and promoted him. And that's how it works in this game. If you he, he might can be get the, yourself... He might be the answer to uh, who's, the, who's the next fucking scumbag to come on the scene. Yeah. Well, all I know is I just want to go... I mean, he even calls himself a master... A master... Uh, what, is it, what is it? A master hustler? Oh, who? Kevin Joji, a career yeah. hustler. All that guy's a career bullshit, though, and a fucking liar, and a fraud, and a fucking scumbag. And anytime you want to come on and tell me any different, Kevin, you're welcome to, you fucking pussy. Because all oh, you yeah. do is ignore any messages, pretend you don't all know can, who I am, this, that, and the other. And we all all know he can do me. is steal from you. Yeah. That's all he can do. Kevin's a complete nut fraud, come, put himself out there like a big bad ex gangster. You're a fucking pussy, Kevin. You're a bullshitter. You're a liar. You're a fucking scumbag who's been deceiving the, co uh, the community for at least four years about my skunks. And anytime you want to come on this fucking show and say anything different, you're welcome, but you won't because you're a fucking liar. Oh, yeah. pussy. And, and, and you, I mean, just look at the blood, the bubble man. Probably Joffrey will get on the bubble, bubble man's man. a fucking idiot as well. He's an idiot. He all he all he's ever done is steal people's money. I told you. I mean, from the I him. met him. The first thing he did was steal from me. He, you yeah. know, he's not a he's, <laughs> he's not a good character. He's no. not a good character. You know. I mean, you know. Uh, uh, you know well, he's one time, most one time most when, sab at the moment. One of his comments about me one day. This is going back a decade because he'd been around a long time now. Uh, uh, he said to me, "Oh, he gives everything away." That's what that was his his impression of me. But then they try yeah. to make that their persona is giving everything away. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, uh, Frenchy Cannoli has a patent on the ice water method now. If you if you were to use the ice water method, he could sue you. Uh, he's but he bad. can't I anymore. I think he has a wife. <laughs> you know, I mean, but you know, it's just it's just the Dutch trying to make uh they created frenchy they put him in la they set him up he's got ben dronkers behind him all the videos everything that he wants he's got all the money you know yeah. what i mean and and uh, nah, so he's the new hash guy that the, that the dutch have declared it's too bad that he died so soon though. he died before milo <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean i mean and that's just it they they have uh they have uh 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 made cannabis like garbage hash is yep. garbage that bho is garbage the the weed that they're growing garbage dude yep. i remember one that back in the day we'd smoke a pinner we'd have a pinner and six people would be rocked <laughs> you know what i mean i i mean i had people tell me when they smoked their first tie stick i hit a tie we'd say that you know uh, what did you just give me acid <laughs> well i'm seeing people start their day off with a full gram dab of bho and i'm just thinking no wonder it doesn't work for you anymore because you're just blasting yourself with this fucking thc and not only that uh, uh have them stop see what happens when they stop they go through withdrawals it'll it'll take you a couple of weeks to be able to live, maybe even a month to be able to feel like a human being if you stop doing that. You know, they actually took a, a natural God-given, Mother Nature-given, Lord Shiva-given medicine for everybody to have, because otherwise we wouldn't have an indoor cannabinoid system. It wouldn't work. We have that. Animals have that. All, all you know, all mammals have that. You know what I mean? The, 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 you know, who knows? It may even work on fish. <laughs> you know, <laughs> who knows? I mean, who they knows? Already gave the LSD most wonderful dolphin. medicine of the world. And then they take chemicals to process. It. Come on. <laughs> well, hey, um, since we're doing, I got about maybe 40 more minutes that I can talk. Um, you know, somebody before... yesterday said to me, well, you know, most of the tinctures that you meet today, that you're that are made today are made with alcohol i said yes but the the best tinctures are made with gl glycerin okay with so you're just talking about vegetable, vegetable glycerin and then you're just heating it up is there a certain temperature no i put in a, i put i put a like a bud uh, an ounce and a half of bud and then i put like a quart jar of the of the uh, glycerin and then i put it on on the lowest setting on your crock pot it's either in the crock pot, you have three settings, warm, low, and high. You want to put it on warm. 
You just want to put it on warm, let it, let it put it on at eight o'clock and, and, and by eight o'clock in the morning, it'll be done. And then you just uh, use a cheesecloth to, to, uh, to separate the buds from the oil. You know. Okay, so it doesn't need to be decarbed? No. Okay. It's being decarbed right there. Oh, right. You're right. That makes sense. <laughs> You're decarbing it. So you think on the warm and then and then and then the it. diabetics can take the glycerin. Diabetics can't take uh, 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 weed alcohol derivatives. So if it's alcohol tincture, they can't have it, but they can take the the glycerin. And the glycerin is so much better than the alcohol that once you try the out the the glycerin, you won't go back to the alcohol one. That's a, that's amazing, honestly. The glycerin is just easier. Okay, and then so I've seen people talk about using RSO with a carrier oil. Would that take the place of the carrier oil right there? What do you mean carrier oil? Um, so I've seen people say that they would take like the raw RSO and then mix it with olive oil. That just like, makes it more bioavailable. Right, 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 right. They mix right, it with, uh, sort of how with left, left uh, coconut oil. oil. Well, they're just putting some cannabinoids in it, you know. They're, so they're making it, you know, it's THC infused or or hemp and yeah cheese. i think the thing is that their fat emulsifies it in the oil and makes it more bioavailable more it makes it more expensive and it makes more and more it makes it more expensive to you but then you have to real you have to you know who's so, making what you're saying though is the who, glycerin who is, is making that right you're right you're right you know, who is making there two types of glycerin um joe is there like um uh, I've just I just popped into my head so if I remember that is there two types of glycerin and one is better than the other it's the vegetable glycerin, and it's uh, it's even kosher. It's been blessed by a, a rabbi. Nice. <laughs> the other one I think you're talking about is propylene glycol. That's the one, yeah. But yeah, okay, awesome. Well, I've got some glycerin, and I've got some flour. I'm going to make myself some RSO. <laughs> yeah, you because really I just used good. alcohol, and it you, sucked. You don't you don't use any any kind of alcohol. You just use the glycerin. It gets yeah. really, yeah. it's really strong. I had my uncle, my uncle took a, te a teaspoon, a tablespoon, and I told him, you know, take like a quarter teaspoon, half a teaspoon. Don't take too much. He took a, tea, a, a tablespoon. He's so fucked up, but he couldn't move. You know, he's like 94 <laughs> years old. He says, man, wow, that stuff really is strong. He says, you know, I, 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 I've taken it. I said, but, but I can't go anywhere. I can't move. <laughs> I said, <laughs> yeah, it's a good I, idea I said, hey, for non-smokers. You, you, you took too much. To you took too much. So when you when you make when you make the glycerin, it already decarbolizes it nicely, and then you get it in the next day. You got to be very very careful who you give it to because it's very very strong. So you know, a teaspoon, is, a tablespoon is, is too much. A teaspoon. Is probably the most you can take in a day, but some people can't take a teaspoon. They take yeah. a quarter teaspoon, you know. Absolutely. Hey, uh, so another question someone had was if you would basically give a rundown about your strain list and describe the plants and everything. Okay, yeah, that'll okay. be good. That you have available. One, one second. One second. Let me find it. Oh, well, while we're waiting for Joe, can I, I just know. ask you, Jeff, how did your um, essence, your, your your essence experiment go? It went awesome. And I actually used glycerin for that and it actually retained the smell. So that was. Yeah, it retained the smell. Yeah, it was really awesome. The terpenes yeah, were the right there. You could tell they were just right there. Wow. I, 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 so have a, a I have a strain that's called, uh, I call it Blue Dragon. It's from the Kumbum Valley in, uh, in, uh, 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 and and uh, Tamil Nadu, and uh, the farmer there has been growing for for he's an older farmer, older guy, and he's been growing for a long, long time. Uh, uh, so it's a real land race. It's, I had I had it tested on phylos, and so I it's the strongest plant I've ever had. It 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 uh, it triple stacks your trichomes, you know, and so what what do you mean by that, Joe? It makes trichomes on top of trichomes. So, like, if if you, 
I can send you a picture of it and you'll see that's on its fourth week of it's going into its fourth week of flower and it already has it's already like getting white and then so it produces so much trichomes that it produces trichomes on top of the trichomes and you can just see it under a microscope so it's a very sticky resinous producing plant and uh, the resin is purple okay so that plant is like the best plant I've ever had in my life so far. And so I hit that with all my stuff. So I've How would you like, describe the terpene profile? Uh, I, have, I don't have, I have the terpene pro, the terpene profile is not as, it's like, you know, if I had a terpene uh, uh, profile, everything that I have, uh, uh, you know, I couldn't afford to do it. I have had it DNA tested. It's on phylos. So I, I, I guess what I meant is just what it, what it smells like. Well, you know, uh, 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 you know, it's, it, you know, it's hard for me to say that because usually in my greenhouse, I'll have like 12 different kinds of plants. But all I can tell you is that, that this plant triple stacks trichomes and it's so sticky that when you walk by it, it'll stick to you. The leaves stick to you. You know, it's a very resin producing plant. Uh, 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 24 to 26 percent THC as it is. So I took that plant and I hit it with my lemon Kush. I I would hit it. I hit it with my Burmese Maui Durban. Think of, look at that. It has a blue dragon and it has a Burmese Maui and a Durban poison mix. Then I have a blue Panama. The blue Panama is all my. Uh, 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 Panamanian genetics, Panama red. So it's Panama red and uh, uh, a blue dragon. Then I have blue blazing 5-0. It's two different kinds of Hawaiian. Then I have a blue Nigerian. That's F1. Uh, uh, it's a blue dragon and Nigerian hash plant. Then I have blue Aztec. Again, that's a blue with Acapulco gold and other Mexicans that are in there pre-1972 and the thing with Panama is also pre-1972 the blue Panama is pre-1972 and the blue uh, uh, Aztec is pre-1972 then I have blue Acapulco gold times Maui uh, my 5-0 my Maui my Kona gold so it's blue dragon Acapulco gold Kona gold then you have blue dragon Burmese Maui then you have uh, blue Acapulco gold. Then you have blue Mayan. Blue Mayan, again, is more Central American, uh, Colombian uh, uh, strains. And then, then you have blue Durban. So it's uh, that's an F1. It says F2 on my catalog, but it's actually F1. It's blue dragon and uh, Durban poison. And then I have bl uh, blue elephants which is uh, 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 purple Urkel and blue uh, Blackberry Kush. So now it's a blue dragon, Blackberry Kush, and purple Urkel. Then you have a blue Boricua, which is an Afghan indica with my blue dragon. So that's an F1. Yeah, blue Mishwakan is a, that plant is a, a, a nice plant, commercial, you know, 17, 18%, but very strong. Very beautiful taste, but it's also mold and mildew resistant. I have blue ghost poison, blue black Maui, blue Malawi OG that has a, a THCV. You have blue Orissa gold, that's F1. Then you have blue Burmese Maui Kona. Another three-way African with a uh, with the blue. Then you have blue blue with with uh, uh, with Kona gold and Durban poison. Then you have blue with black Congo and Durban poison. Then you have blue Bangi haze. Bangi haze is a really uh, old school uh, 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 haze. Has nothing to do with the skunk man. So I have it has a blue dragon and Bangi haze. You have blue red Congo. Uh, 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 that is a uh, THCV. 
and and uh, uh, you know, twenty six percent. A lot of this stuff is high, high percentages of full cannabinoid profile. Zulu Gold, which is a, is an Indian and, a, and an African F one. Then I got Blues Blues Joe Ho, Joe's Haze, which is my Haze and Blue Dragon. So the, here, all the all the uh, the the uh, old school and new school and and land race genetics F one are right there. So you you get like three genera you get uh, 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 F ones blue Nigerian you get the F ones blue gold Zulu gold F ones what else. Ooh, that blue Acapulco gold, that, that should be really nice. But all of these, like, there's only two, there's only two indicas here, which would be uh, uh, the blue Boricua is an indica. And let's see, there's one more. There's one more. Blue elephants. Blue elephants. That That's an indica. That's a 50-50 uh, indica with... Uh, a blue dragon. So there's two indicas there. But most of these are, are rocket fuel sativas. <laughs> but that's a good mix, like the Burmese Maui Durban, you know? Yeah, Burmese Maui from the pre-1972. Uh, uh, and that, that Burmese Maui is that we had a Maui female, but we didn't have anything to mate it with. So we made it to a Burmese. So when you breed it forward, if you bought it at that level, it would separate into the both. And so I took that the indica out of it and used it on, on another uh, uh, on some other products projects I was working on. But this one here uh, is off the hook. I haven't. I've only seen the, the the only ones I've seen on this line out of these lines have been the originals and the blue dragon. But some of this stuff here is going to be so out of this world that you can only imagine. You know, I mean, here you go. You got blue Burmese. Blue red. Yeah, the Panama red is uh, uh, the blue Panama. That's a huge plant that you need to grow outdoors. You know, or if you're going to put it indoors, you got to flower it quick. You know, three weeks, put it into flower. It's still going to get huge. A lot of these sativas, when you grow them inside, you got to, you got to, uh, turn off, uh, you got to put them into flower sooner because what happens is you let them grow too big and then they outgrow your room. But so don't be afraid to, 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 to store your plants in flower in three or four weeks. Don't be afraid because it, it, uh, uh, because these sativas will, will outgrow your room. Hey Joe, will you tell everybody about how, like what, what makes your Durban different than everybody else's Durban? It's the original. It's the one that's that 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 Philo's Bioscience said uh, is one of the top top ten most rare strains in the world. Yeah, I see Malawi's on that list too, and you got that in the OG, so that's pretty cool too. And that's an old one too. I got that from there was a guy on the scene called Afro Man, and he had a company called Afro Pips, and he. He strictly had land races, you know, and uh, he was a really good connection. He was an Afrikaner, and then he died. When he died, his son got the business, and his son sold it. You remember how I told you I put his seats out after he died, Joe? Yeah, right. You told me that. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. the first time I've heard that. Yeah, I, I didn't know him personally, but it just seems like a tragedy to see like I met thousands him. of his seats sat there yeah. doing nothing. I met I met him in at Canada Trade in 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 uh, Bern, and uh, he had a little table, little thing. I mean, it was wasn't even it was like a, a tenth of a booth, <laughs> you know what I mean? And he just yeah. stood behind it and sold seed, you know. And I was the only one that went to see him. Not many people went to see him. Everybody was after Arjun or Sensi yeah. Seed or this one or it that is. one. And, and 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 the real shit was right there. Yeah, you know. Hey Joe, what what is the Blue Blazing 5.0? It's a two different kinds of Hawaiian. It's Blazing 5.0. So it's Blazing 
It's blazing is a Hawaiian and the 5-0 is a Hawaiian. That's a double Hawaiian. Pre-1972. Another one in there is uh, the blue Acapulco gold. You know. But the blue Mal Malawi should be really nice. Because I... Uh, 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 Because the blue Malawi is that energizer bunny that gives you the munchies, you know. I got another. Oh, no, no, actually, that one has THCV in it. No, it doesn't give you the munchies. I'm wrong. That has a THCV in it. Hey, so I got another question. So this person says. That Malawi tested out at 2% at, uh, THCV. <laughs> This is, this is regarding your strains too. So he says, I'm an Indian from Kerala and Udeki gold sounds similar to Iduki gold, which is what Kerala is renowned for the most. Any comment on this? That's true. Okay, awesome. And then he says also Arisa gold and Shalivati Vati is our descendants of Iduki gold, if this info yeah. helps. Yeah. Udigi Gold is the original. I have the original. I, I think I had it tested too. DNA tested. I think it's really awesome uh, just seeing all the different regions in your selections, honestly. Um, that's really refreshing because, you know, we're just so used to somebody making up stupid names for their plants. And you're you're making sure that the country of origin remains in the name. I just think that's so important. Oh yeah, it's important so you know where they came from. Joe, yeah. do you think Phylos? Uh, I mean, just I, I, since you know, I found out it was quite nefarious. I, I stopped following anything to do with it. To be honest, I didn't want any association with it. But are there? Is there either? Uh, an existing phylos now that we can trust or is there a, a different kind of I, thought, I don't know anything here? I don't know phylos was the only one that I've heard of and I used them and uh, 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 I did nine tests with them and then they, they try to sell me this test where where they could tell uh, 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 if, if your plants are male or female yeah and they told me all my plants were male when uh, were, were male <laughs> And how did you know, that test it, work, Joe? Because there's some sexing companies available now where you, you just grow the, the seeds and when it's got like its first leaf, I think you can then take a snippet of it and send it in the post and they can test it and then tell you if it's going to go on to be male or female. Was it something similar to that? Or do they actually yeah, just test the exactly. seeds itself? I got burnt on that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and probably because I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I mean, I'm 100 years old, so it's difficult for me to... <laughs> To keep up with just my password, you know what I mean? <laughs> I've got, you know what I mean? I mean, I mean, I have everything. I I have all the equipment, but I don't have the you know the knowledge. But I'm getting more knowledge every day. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna be starting another. I'm gonna I'm gonna bombard the 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 uh, uh, YouTube and everything with. I'm gonna put, be doing this. Uh, they're coming here on Wednesday. I'm gonna be making some hash. And here and and we'll be we'll be uh, showing it on the internet and giving it to, to you guys to show. Well, thank you so oh, much. Want to see that. You're 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 really doing the world a service by not gatekeeping this information and giving it away freely. I think there's a lot of people from your generation that could have done more to help patients and people who actually need it by just giving this information you know i understand everyone has to eat you know everyone has to survive and make money off what they love doing um, if you're going to be in cannabis obviously you should be able to support yourself but as far as i'm concerned with the information you've just given us freely i mean this these interviews are some of the most important cannabis interviews that have ever been done and that's because you know of you man so you know uh, you know, otherwise we wouldn't get all of this information in one package we might get a little trickle of information here a trickle of information there but it would never be as straight and to the point as it is now so just i just want to thank you again for that honestly for not yeah, the, yeah, I definitely want to thank Joe too because, like I said before, you know, our podcasts are doing great, but that side, as you say, just the general ethics is so nice. I mean, even somebody I did respect, my gold timer one, I'm glad, I'm, he would never reveal anything. I can't thank you enough. I can't thank you enough 
for having that guy from Corella on there because that, I'm trying to get more of a voice there in Asia because uh, uh, Asia is confused. They're doing the drug war thinking that they're making the U.S. happy while the drug war is ending here. And all they're doing are be doing the, the work of the pharmaceutical companies because while they destroy their, their originals, their, their, their originals are being patented by the pharmaceutical companies. Well, one of the things that. we do is we focus internationally. You know, we, we really try to reach out to people all around the world, not just in America, honestly, you know. Well, you're walking the walk as well, Jeff, because you're actually doing uh, Joe's lighting techniques. Probably a lot of people, they, they wouldn't want to try it unless they saw somebody else do it, you know, and you're, you're actually doing that and showing the plants to looking superb. Absolutely. They've never been happier. So, um, and I made sure to give that guy from Kerala your email. So he'll definitely probably be reaching out to you. Um, but, uh, yeah, but yeah, you the, know, I mean, the Odiki gold seeds, those Odiki gold seeds are, are, are one of the most rarest sought after strain, uh, seeds. I mean, it, it's just, you know, that, that's, that's a, 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 that, that strain goes back, you know, probably five, 6,000 years from those Hindus. Uh, uh, where he is, Karela, Tamil Nadu, South India, was like the center of Hinduism in the world. And from there, it got exported to Thailand, to Cambodia, to everywhere else. You know what I mean? The, it, 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 Cambodia, and Cambodia is more, more Hindu, and, and, and Thailand is more Buddhist. And you know what I mean? And but you know, it got exported everywhere. And wherever they were exported, they exported their medicine, which at the uh, at the time was uh, 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 Corella Gold, because that gave you the pickup and the and the energy. It energized you and stuff, and uh, made you think out of the box and all this other stuff. You know, so uh, that that's an important center. Corella is an important that is such center an important of cannabis. As well, that you mentioned, now, Joe. As, as, as most important fact about Corella is that from there it got exported to Africa and from Africa it got exported to South America. So you actually can trace that Corella Udiki gold to Africa and then you can trace it to Colombia because that's, that was a big black slave trade was there and uh, a, a big slave trade was there. And so uh, so you, you see the lineage right there coming from India, going to Africa, Africa to, to Colombia. And it's the same stuff. When you DNA sequence it, you see that it's the same lineage. The plants look the same too. They're like huge Christmas tree type plants. It's the same lineage. So you can actually trace it. Uh, Corella was the start of, 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 uh, uh, of medicine. It was always used as medicine. So you, you know, just mentioned. I definitely want to reinforce that point that, that you made, Joe, about the fact that they used to be, and it still is, but there used to be cannabis that would sort of open your mind, the unbrainwashing cannabis, the opposite to the stupid weeds, the stuff that made you think, the stuff that even put thoughts in your head that weren't there before. I've had yeah. experiences yeah. where I've smoked yeah, me too. those kinds me too. of cannabis, and you could just be relaxing there smoking it, and something entirely unconnected to what you may have been thinking about if you're thinking about anything will just burst into your brain and it'll be like a revelation it'll be an inspiration and that is something so important so just so different to what you can experience with modern, with modern cannabis you just don't experience that kind of thing you just it's experience lethargy boredom dumbness whereas there's cannabis out there that will literally you know spark your synapses and and open your mind in ways you didn't know was possible yeah and that's what they were scared of the weed that uh, opened your mind that let you see through the bullshit that they were putting you know in the media etc that was dumbing people down that actually woke people up in a, in a meaningful way you know yeah they didn't want that they didn't want that that and they still don't no absolutely they don't they don't and they still but don't. It's, it's important is... that people realize that there is that cannabis that exists because if you've only experienced cannabis from even the 90s onwards, you say, as, as far back as that, it was starting to be absent from what was being put out there. You know, you wouldn't find it in the, the greenhouse strains and the, or the Dutch strains. You know, certainly past 2000, there is no cannabis that does that, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, so it's the important lot... to go back to the old school because that, that was, it was, there was cannabis that used to exist it still does exist 
that people aren't aware of that has that kind of specific effect that kind of like will give you a revelation when you're smoking it you know that will yeah. inspire you that will awaken something to you or that, as i say that will just put in knowledge that you, you never something you never thought about I've, I've had that experience where i've just been sat there smoking you thought about much. stuff that you never thought about before exactly and it will be a truth it'll be like a universal truth that will just hit you and you're like man that's the truth <laughs> this that, is given that's, what, me that's what cannabis did it got the light yeah. bulb lit exactly 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 that Jim. i could only imagine that light bulb a really moment. well made hash form too you know, I Sorry, I, uh, I missed that, bro. I, I I'm really looking forward to going back to Nepal and, and and talking to the people there. You know, see, there there's there's very few of us left that have been through all this all this whole thing from start to finish. You know, and so uh, a lot of information. One of my things has been there's a lot of information that needs to be it needs to be get be out there. People need to get the credit for what they did. You know, and. Uh, 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 we were we were bringing in real medicine here, you know, and here nowadays you, they even you know, it's surprising that in Nepal they haven't started a Ayurvedic hospital and and really start, you know, branched out doing that Ayurvedic um, uh, medicine and natural medicines there. It's they're all there, India too, you know, but they're all super educated now and they're all following the wrong lead, you know, and you know cannabis wasn't a uh, and known as, it was known as an intoxicant, but it wasn't. There wasn't any kind of doper scene. It was always used as medicine, you know. So it, it, it's 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 good because uh, uh, hopefully I'll be able to reach some people in Asia and get them to start thinking my way. In Nepal, they're about seventy percent of the way to legalizing it medically. See, uh, uh, you know, uh, they should be charging people. Everybody who wants to go and smoke hash and or, uh, temple balls in Nepal, they can get a license at the airport for 50 bucks. And that alone would bring 25, 30, 40 million dollars a year to, to Kathmandu. How many tourists come there a year if it was open again? If they brought back the love and you know the, the tranquility there. I don't know if they can ever come back, but let's let's hope that we can find a place where it's totally free again. You know? I think that's, uh, I think that's really all i give a fuck about doing honestly uh for for you know is just really making a difference um so you know but um i don't want to cut everybody off but i, I do have to get going so uh, me too i gotta go too so okay. let's get together again let's see what happens there's a couple of others one show the hash smuggling show mm -hmm. uh, uh 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 you can use a picture from one of my uh of one of my pictures you can impose there that's the only thing that doesn't there's no picture on um there's a thumbnail but it's a view on the tibetan pony for that one okay i could change it to a picture of you though like with one where you're smoking yeah that's good okay i'll do that um right. yeah well thanks for everybody listening thanks blue skies thanks no i i have a i have a i have a picture of of a of a, a cruet of a a coffee filter and a, 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 of a cruet where you can see the oil and the yeah. resin glands and the water floating on top. I'll make that this one. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we would definitely, as soon as you get that video made, let us know because I would like to, you know, promote that for you. Like anything I can do to help promote you and help get this message out, I'm willing to do. So just All anything right, you need from me, just let me know, you know? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. I appreciate you coming on too. Okay. Well, take, take care. care. All right. Take care.